beep, 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 beep. Here we go. This is my favourite shirt right now, can you tell? I've been wearing it all the time. <laughs> Don't know why. Hawaii. That's why, I suppose, because, you know, makes me think of the warmth as we enter autumn and then winter. Welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. I hope you're well. Straight into it today, National Post, Canada, um, an article here from Barbara Kay, which I think is an important one because it's talking about the movement to oppose gender activism on the back of the One Million March, which I believe there's been a resurgence of. And I was speaking to a Canadian warrior teacher the other day who said to me, this has absolutely galvanised people in Canada. So, you know, that's something we can celebrate. So that put a little smile on your fat face this morning. Canada is galvanised, rather like a bucket. No, Canada is galvanised, right? So that it's genuinely, it's galvanising people in Canada. So the, the word's getting out there. No surprise that Canada is the one that's gone the furthest down the road towards totalitarianism under the rule of that... Um, uh, Justin Trunchpole, or whatever his name is, right? So <clears throat> the movement to oppose gender activism in schools is growing and science is on its side. Isn't it lovely to hear that? The escalating fixation on gender in schools has produced a nationwide swell of protest. In 2017, the 16-year-old daughter of Ontario parents, J <coughs> excuse me, Jason and Pamela Buffon, <coughs> arrived home in distress. Her grade one teacher, the six-year-old said, had informed the class that girls are not real and boys are not real. It was later revealed that the novice teacher had seized multiple opportunities for promoting radical gender ideology to her students using storybooks and videos. Gender discussion is not part of the Ontario curriculum for grade one, but the teacher circumvented that constraint by presenting the material, material as Teachable moments. These people are like someone out of a horror film. Teachable moments. It was a teachable moment. Right? You don't get teachable moments in formal education. That's why it's called formal education. You want a teachable moment? Come and do some work with me. Then you can give people teachable moments in Asda, on the bus stop, right? Between cubicles and the toilet. Psst, you heard about gender ideology. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm a turf. <laughs> right? So the, uh, the Buffon's complaints were stonewalled up the chain of authority. So they went up the chain, still stonewalled, right? Chain of authority. They eventually filed an application before the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario on their daughter's behalf, alleging discrimination with respect to educational services because of sex and gender identity, contrary to the Human Rights Code. The Buffon's argument was that gender identity and gender expression, which are protected by Ontario's Human Rights Code, includes those whose identity accords with their sex, i.e. most children. The school board held that the law only offers protection to the historically disadvantaged. The Buffons lost the case. It's surreal, isn't it? Throughout their sojourn, the Buffons were offered private encouragement by other parents, but stood alone. Stood alone when publicly voicing concerns about gender pedagogy at curriculum meetings. Pedagogy, the teaching of children. Okay. Pamela Buffon was galvanised to action by her isolating experience, immersing herself in search of radical gender ideology, its theories, its entrenchment in pedagogy, and now finally, controversial affirmation model of transition that emerged from it. She reached out to dissidents in teaching and healthcare who had been forced to practice rapid affirmation against their consciences and better judgments. Is it me? Or if you didn't have the context for this, you could you'd think it would be Nazi Germany or you know pre pre revolution Mao. The, the way that people speak about the fear that comes with this, with these allies, Pamela Buffon founded the Canadian Gender Report. The group pe presents objective news commentaries and reports from gender researchers in the North America and Europe, which demonstrates that the policies of the Canadian government and the views held by many in the media are extreme, both in their defence. Deference to activist dictated policies and their indifference, even hostility, to parents expressed concerns over their children's role as guinea pigs for unproven theorists. That's what it is. It is behaviorist and it is it is neuroeugenics. They're using children as guinea pigs. The patient and timidity, the patience and timidity that was so common among parents in the early days of Buffon's travails is over. The escalating fixation on queer activism in schools has produced a nationwide swell of protest. The, I, this is just great, I love it. The recent multi-city, bullishly vigorous One Million March for Children, which was organised by an alliance of, here we go, Muslim groups, Christian social conservatives, secular classic liberals and other organisations, and achieved an important goal. 
dissent from authoritarianism through the throughout the education matrix is finally perceived as a thing. Parents' rights as the people who hold the primary responsibility of protecting their children from harm had better be taken by seriously by politicians or else. What a collaborative endeavour to bring together such strange bedfellows, a collaborative endeavour that is bringing about change in Canada. Bolstered by recent lawsuits around new social transitioning rules favouring parents that were filed against the governments of Saskatchewan and New Brunswick, the timing is perfect for a just-released report from CGR with Buffon at the editorial helm, which is on all but name. A white paper for responsible legislation on the plethora of gender identity issues. Titled Canada's Canadian School Guidance Towards an Evidence-Based Mental Health Focused Policy, it argues that the current policies on gender identities in schools need to be replaced with policies that are informed by well-established, long-standing biopsychosocial models of child and adolescent development. She's talking about Piaget and Rousseau, uh, Rousseau I presume here, talking from a Piagetian and a Rousseau Rousseauian um, uh, uh, lens in order to, uh, in order to make her point. Um, and this development model should be looked at, uh, which enabled gender questioning youth the opportunity to explore their identities without being told that they were born in the wrong body. That document then goes on to set out various other things. Uh, it's, it's a great piece of work and I suggest you go and have a look. I've got the article from the National Post in the Dubris. Do subscribe and buy me a coffee if you can. Help me out with a few bob, that keeps me going. Um, and I would also add that uh, this is a position I don't hold, just, just so you know. OK, it's a position I don't hold. This is a is to a certain degree conciliatory. I don't hold a conciliatory position. Um, I think this needs to be eradicated by law and done so with extreme prejudice. And I don't mean assassination before you get some nut job mean say that. Extreme prejudice, I mean, in this case, being that you have to go in and actively seek out this ideology, actively seek out the ideologies that come with it and actively get rid of anybody that has practised this in the classroom or taught it as fact, which so many teachers sadly have done. Uh, so I'm really pleased for Canada. It just looks like you're going in the right direction. And I think what we see in Canada, we will see happen here. So, uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, don't. I don't want what she's offering, right? Because I don't think it goes far enough to eradicate something that needs to be out of the public sphere altogether. On the other hand, my goodness, that's a move in Canada brought around by um, by the buffoon couples, a buffoon couple, right, who are just, have done an extraordinary job in a very, very difficult circumstances in Canada. So I, I do wish them all the well with this. I, You know, there's going to be another march. Let's see how big it is this time. And let's see whether or not it takes off in the UK. I've seen mumblings. I don't know whether you have. Let me know in the Dubris, right? Keep going, because they don't like it up them. And boy, oh boy, it looks to me like sometime in the near future, a lot of them are going to get it up them. And for that, I want a first row seat. I'll see you later, folks.